Washington calling counter spy. Washington calling counter spy. Washington calling counter spy. Harding, counter spy, calling Washington. Harding, counter spy, calling Washington. Phillips H. Lord's Counter Spy. The Blue Network is proud to present Phillips H. Lord's Counter Spy, a dramatization packed with thrills and adventure. The fascinating portrayal of undercover agents working against enemy spies within our borders. All over this great country tonight is an invisible army of men and women highly trained to protect us from professional enemy spies within our borders. Imagine chief counter spy of them all as David Harding. Pittsburgh, Henry Hughes, cultured, well-educated, and sophisticated, entered his hotel suite on the seventh floor. Seated before a dressing table in the bedroom was his most attractive wife. Hello, Laura. Fixing up a little? You're late, Henry. Oh, uh, some matters down at the office. I guess I'll send for a drink. Want one? Already had one. Oh, having a drink alone, eh? Perhaps you weren't alone. You swine! You insinuating pig! You come in with that saintly way you have, and I know where you've been. At the office, yes, the office, with lipstick all over your collar, night after night! Coming in thinking I don't know, you think I'm a fool! Stop it, you little hellion! Hellion! I gave up everything for you. Decent family, money, position, honor. I followed you every place you've gone for ten years, you sham, you fake traitor! What's that, Laura? Oh. Oh. Oh, I can't cry. I can't even do that anymore. Oh, why do I love you so? Now, listen, kid. You've been great. Sure, sure, I've been seeing someone else. But you know, it's business. Now, as soon as I get all the information I'm after, we can leave this country... We'll be rich the rest of our lives. Now, I can't tell you the things I'm doing. I'm not allowed to. The Gestapo would kill me. But they promised that if I make good on this job, it means a big job over there. We'll get out of this country. But this is my country, Henry. Can't you see what I've been through for years? Loving you. Ready to die for you. For cheating all the time on my country. Which means more to you, your country or me? You. There. That sounds more natural. Well, all right. I've got to go out for a while tonight. Now, you go to a movie or something. I'll be back as soon as I can. Where are you going? I've got to drive over the mountain to Connorsville. It's uh, about 90 miles. You lie. You're lying like you always do. You're going with her. You're letting me down. I can see it in your eyes. Well, you can't. You won't. Now, wait a minute. Okay. Okay, come along. I'll prove it to you. You mean... You mean... You want me to go with you? Yes, I'll prove to you that it's business. We'll have some drinks, drive over, and make a good time of it. You mean it, Henry? I'd rather have you with me than anyone else. Oh, I'm such a fool. But I do love you so. (laughs) 
Here's the bottle, Laura. Have yourself another drink. <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful tonight. Look, Henry, you can see for miles. Sure. We're about 4,000 feet up. Look. Look how those cliffs drop right down from the side of the road. What's the matter? Oh, I thought I'd turn and drive right up to the edge. We can sit for a few minutes and look out at the view. Henry. The front wheels are right on the edge, both of them. <laughs> of course. See how I can handle a car? I didn't have a drink like you did. Oh. It's exciting. Have another drink. <laughs> All right, but I'm dizzy now. Yeah. Lean on my shoulder. Henry. I'm sorry. Oh! Oh, oh, oh quick! What's the matter? Oh! Oh! Oh, it looks all right now, but something... Something my oh, arm, like a needle. Oh, perhaps there was a pin or something in the cushion. Oh, it felt like a... Henry. Henry. Yes? What stuck into me? What was it? Why, how should I know? You do know. It was you. You've done it. There was a hypodermic needle. You poisoned me. You had... You're getting too dangerous to have around you and your jealous streak. Help! Help! Tell your head off. Nobody will ever hear you up here. You're going over the cliff. They'll get you for this. They'll get you for me. Oh, no. no. The injection was just enough to make you unconscious. When they find your body, it will have bled naturally. An accident. Your stomach full of liquor. Now. Emergency brake. Happy journey, my dear. Now to get the front wheels over. <clears throat> now the back wheels over. your report. Very attractive wife of a Henry Hughes. Drove car while intoxicated off Mountain Cliff. Henry Hughes holds a rather important position in the Pittsburgh Bronze Casting Company, which is now doing war work exclusively. Mm hmm? What's the catch? She's supposed to have driven off the cliff while intoxicated, but the ignition wasn't turned on. The key was in the lock, turned off. Quite remarkable. In defense work, huh? Have a complete report ready. I'm flying immediately. Harding, calling J-7 Pittsburgh. J-7 Pittsburgh. Check. Come in. Just had a thought. Check on the bookkeeper of the Pittsburgh Bronze Casting Company. Find out everything about him. We'll arrive in about an hour. Now, these reports, Mr. Harding, they're all on Henry Hughes. Oh, you did well to get them this quickly. Notice this, sir. Very well help it. As a matter of two years there. There seems to be no record of Henry Hughes at all during that period. Did you check passport files? Yes, Mr. Harding. If Hughes left the country and re-entered, he did so without leaving any record of it. Yeah. Well, there 
there isn't a thing here that points suspicion in any way to Henry Hughes. Uh, what about the bookkeeper of the bronze casting company? Uh, Elmer Bruce, 65, small of stature, light hair, blue eyes, uh, lives with wife, both regular church attenders. She's a Sunday school teacher. They have a daughter and two sons, one grandchild. Mm -hmm. Bruce is very well thought of by his neighbors. He's a great lover of books. Goes to the library at least four nights a week. The library, huh? Quite a scholarly chap. I think I'll drop over to the library and see if Bruce happens to be there. Pardon me, uh, were you through with this book? Oh, oh, yes, 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 I was just browsing through it. Uh, won't you sit down a moment? I'd like to speak to you. Why, yes, certainly. Aren't you Elmer Bruce? Why, why that's the most amazing thing I've ever heard of. I, I've never seen you before. Well, this meeting isn't quite as accidental as it might seem, Mr. Bruce. For certain reasons, I didn't want to go to your home. Uh, I'd like to have you look at my credentials. Mercy. Oh, there's nothing to be nervous about. Oh, have I done something wrong? I, uh, I just wanted to ask you a question, Mr. Bruce. Do you happen to know a man who works for your company by the name of Henry Hughes? Why, yes. Oh, wasn't that a catastrophe, his wife's death? Yes, a terrible thing. Mr. Bruce, of course you pay all the employees of the Bronze Casting Company by check. Oh, yes, yes, uh, 462, uh, counting the two janitors at night watchmen. Uh, that is the last count was that. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, Mr. Bruce, tomorrow your accountants are going to call on you. And Mr. Harold Lawrence, the president of your firm. Oh, yes. Now, these accountants are going to recommend that you pay the employees from now on in cash instead of by check. Oh, no. I want you to fall in with the accountant's plan to pay from now on in cash. But, but I, I couldn't. I'd be untruthful. I'm sorry, Mr. Bruce, but these happen to be government orders. A great deal depends upon them. Well, I, I'm sorry, too, Mr. Harding. I respect my government, but even for it, I... I couldn't lie. Mr. Bruce, it's very refreshing to meet a man of your principles. I, I, I don't wish to be an unreasonable prick. I just want to do what's right. Well, uh, couldn't you say, under the present-day circumstances, you recommend paying by cash? And you wouldn't have to say what circumstances. Well, that's, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's rather delicately skirting the truth. <laughs> well, I might for my country. Oh, well, that's fine. Now, you will receive from the bank each week some separate bills of different denominations, which we will have the numbers of. Now, you are to put these designated bills in the pay envelope each week of Henry Hughes until notified to the contrary. Oh, yes. And you're not to mention to anyone under any circumstances that you have met or talked with me. Oh, my gracious. That's a big responsibility. I hope I'm a big enough person, Mr. Harding. After all, I've always lived in my very small way, and I'm not a broad or big person. Well, I know all about you, Mr. Bruce. You're considered a very fine person. Thank you. Now I'll have to leave you. I'm going back to Washington. J-7 has just arrived from Pittsburgh by plane, Mr. Harding. Send him right in. Got any news? Quite a bit, Mr. Harding. Very interesting. Uh -huh. Now, let's see. This report covers two weeks. Yes, sir. Henry Hughes has received two pay envelopes, each containing $125. All of that money was marked, and the banks were instructed to watch for it. 
and to make careful notes where the different bills were turned in from. Hugh spent about $80 each week. Mm-hmm. Let's see. He got paid Saturday. By Monday noon, the bank had received $20 from the Berkshire Clothing Company, $15 from the Red Moth, well, that's a nightclub, $30 from the hotel where Henry Hughes has his apartment, $5 of the money was received by the bank from a little cigar stand around the corner. He was evidently changed a bill there. Mm-hmm. Well, let's take Tuesday. A $10 bill from the gasoline station and garage where Hughes keeps his car. Uh, let me see that second week's report. I think I know what you've noticed, Mr. Harding. Let's see. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Oh. Uh, yes, first week. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yes, sir. Three times each week. One of those marked bills was returned to the bank from the Revolero Moving Picture House. Uh, how often does this uh, Revolero Moving Picture House change its feature pictures? Twice a week, sir. Mm-hmm. And yet Henry Hughes, shortly after his wife's death, over which he grieved greatly, goes to a certain movie house three times each week. Although they change the feature picture only twice a week. See that J-4 goes to Pittsburgh immediately. Gets a job as usherette in the Rebel Arrow Moving Picture House. And have her contact me for further instructions. Yes, sir. Well, this case is beginning to look pretty big, George. I have a feeling that we're going into action. <laughs> Continue tonight's case of Counter Spy in just a moment. But first, here is a message of vital importance to women and girls who want to take an active part in the war effort. Your country needs you and needs you now as a student nurse. The need is so great that 19,000 student nurses will have to enter mid year classes in January and February. Will you be one of them? You won't attack the enemy, but you'll fight. You'll fight pain, you'll fight casualties. Even as a student, you'll release some experienced nurse to help our fighting men on the fields of battle. Here is a direct call from your country. To answer it, women and girls between 18 and 35 who are citizens and high school graduates in good health should write to Student Nurse, Box 88, New York City. That's Box 88, New York City. And they will give you full information. <laughs> Now, back to Phillips H. Lord's Counter Spy. J4 reporting the Harding. From Pittsburgh. J-4 reporting from Pittsburgh. Harding speaking. Proceed. The man in question entered theater at 410, went down center aisle to row D, asked girl to remove coat from a seat, and sat down next to her. After a while, spoke to her, and from then on, they carried on conversation. This happened Monday and Wednesday. The same girl each time. Who was the girl? Phyllis Lawrence, daughter of the president of the Bronze Casting Company. What? Yes, sir. Oh. I'll contact you later. Yes, Mr. Harding. I'm leaving for Pittsburgh immediately. Tell J-7 I'm going to call on Mr. Lawrence, president of the Bronze Casting Company. <laughs> Mm. 
Oh, pardon me. Uh, Mr. Harold Lawrence at home? He is, sir. May I ask who's calling? You kindly take in my card, if you please. Would you step in, sir? Thank you. If you wait, sir, I'll take your card to Mr. Lawrence. Certainly. He's in the living room. May I have your hat and coat, sir? I think I'll take it with me. May I take your package for you, sir? No, I'd like to keep that with me, too. Right this way, sir. Come in, Mr. Harding. Delighted to meet you, sir. I'm very glad to meet you, Mr. Lawrence. You sit down. Sit down. William should have taken your thing. <sighs> well, I... I'm just stopping for a moment. Mr. Lawrence... You have a daughter. Why, yes, Phyllis. Oh, it's uh, a little difficult for me to broach the subject, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, but what is it, Mr. Harding? Speak up, man. But are you aware, Mr. Lawrence, that your daughter is quite interested in a certain gentleman? Why, no. Phyllis has many gentleman friends. I, I don't think she's partial to anyone especially. Well, I'm afraid, Mr. Lawrence, that I must tell you... That she is. Just a moment, Mr. Harding. I respect you and your position, but whether my daughter is partial to any young man or not is none of your business. Well, I don't blame you for saying that, Mr. Lawrence. And believe me, I'd never be here if it were not for a very serious purpose. What is it? Well, the young man that your daughter happens to be interested in is in the employ of our enemies, Germany. Now, let me get this straight. My daughter. You mean Phyllis? Yes. She's interested in a man who's a German spy? I'm afraid so. No, 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 you're wrong. Who is it? A man employed by you. Henry Hughes. Oh, no, no, Harding. Hughes? Hughes' wife, Phyllis, doesn't even know him. Besides, his wife was just killed. Why, Hughes is a fine man. I'm sorry, Mr. Lawrence, but Henry Hughes is a member of the German Gestapo. He's lying. He's lying. It isn't so. Don't you believe him, Father? Phyllis, have you been listening? Yes, and Henry isn't a spy. He's a patriotic American, just as patriotic as you are. Why, Henry? He... Henry? Henry who, Phyllis? Henry Hughes, if you've got to know. I've loved him for months, but I wouldn't see him. Then when his wife was killed, I didn't see why I shouldn't see him. He's honest, he's decent, and I'm not ashamed. I love him. Phyllis, do you know what you're saying? I can't believe... Uh, Mr. Lawrence, I'll leave. I think this is between you and your daughter. Father, this man has tried to poison your mind. Henry's fine and you know it. And he's my sweetheart. I'll call you shortly on the phone, Mr. Lawrence. Goodbye. Phyllis, I want the truth. How long have you been seeing this man, Hughes? How do you know he isn't what Mr. Harding said he is? How do you know? I do know. And he loves me. Ask him. He didn't love his wife anyway. He told me. Ask him. I'll ask him nothing. You've been meeting him behind my back. You've been lying to me about where you were going. You haven't told me a thing about well, it. Well, why should I? Is it a sin to love a man? It's a sin to love an enemy. That man, Harding, must know what he's talking I about. I tell you, it's lies, 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 a pack of lies. I'll prove that they're lies. I can see under the shade. Harding's driving off in his car. Henry, that's... Fool, that stupid ass. I'd like to have my hands on him. It's killing his wife that's led up to this. I told him not to. Uh, but he was afraid of her. She got so jealous. We've got to get out, Phyllis. Things have gotten too hot. No, it isn't all up yet. Henry's driven over the mountains tonight. The counter spies evidently haven't arrested him yet, and we can see that he doesn't talk. On his way back here, he's found with a bullet. Yes, yes. Let's get the car. They'll drive and meet him. Do you think Harding was suspicious of us? Of course not. Harding thinks you're a respectable businessman and I'm your innocent daughter led astray. He came to warn us. We'll say if we can do away with Henry before he talks. What's that? What? That package by the chair. Right there. Oh, that's where Harding was sitting. Must have been in must have been in such a hurry he forgot it. Wait a minute. Ah, it's a short wave, sir. Oh, we're tricked. Harding left that there to trick us. He's heard everything we've said. Quick, the car in the garage. Don't stop for a thing. Come on. 
drive. Prime it, it's cold. Shut up, I'm starting this. I'm afraid it won't go. Yes, the distributor cap is missing. And I wouldn't move either one of you. Two of my agents are in the back and have you covered. Very clever. And the next time you go to a theater to meet a man, Phyllis, if you ever do, be sure and look around and see who's sitting in the seat behind you. What my daughter has done has no bearing on me. Why am I arrested? Oh, come, Mr. Lawrence. You've been operating this factory on money supplied by Berlin. You make parts for airplane motors so that your firm is close to many manufacturers and you have access to their plans. And besides, she's not your daughter. He's Fräulein Grok. Henry's responsible. The fool, he ought to be shot. That's just what he did. Killed himself when my men went to arrest him. Henry? Yes. Henry. Your father. <laughs> Back in just a moment to tell you about next week's exciting counter spy case. But in the meantime, we wish to call your attention to the government's urgent appeal for the conservation of gas for cooking and heating. Gas must be conserved for the following reasons it is used for fuel by many industrial plants, which are now expanded to double or triple their normal peacetime size. And it is used widely in the manufacture of armor plate, gun barrels, and similar equipment, which must be hardened or molded at extremely high temperatures. Because its flame is freer from impurities than the flame from coal or oil, gas is used almost exclusively in these processes. And gas is in itself a raw material for certain products, synthetic rubber, for example, and ammonium nitrate, which is used in the manufacture of explosives. That is the why, and now here's the how, of gas conservation. Don't use the kitchen range to heat the house. If you heat with gas, keep your house below 65 degrees. Cook with a low blue flame. Use hot water sparingly. Those are directions direct from Uncle Sam. Now, they may not sound as intriguing as an assignment to track down and capture enemy spies, but the conservation of gas practiced by millions of soldier citizens on the home front will be echoed in cheers of victory from our fighting men because the conservation of gas will help give them equipment and weapons they need. Next week, David Harding and Counter Spy will be back with you again at this same time for The Case of the Trail Count. The society woman who talked too much. The highball glass served by waiter 37. The man at the zoo. The long underwear at the railroad station. And the ultra polite third degree. That's next week's unusual Counter Spy. <laughs> Seven days till Christmas. Give the present with a future. The greatest gift of all, a share in America. Give war bonds and stamps.